What? I didn't book a plane ticket for you. Isn't it obvious? This is a family vacation. That old lady should go home and clean. If the house is dirty when we return, I'll definitely banish you from the family. I was dumbfounded by Catherine's words. I had come to the airport looking forward to today's trip. To find out that my plane ticket hadn't been booked and I couldn't go. I had endured all the unreasonable things Catherine had done up to this point. I had forgiven Catherine because she was family. To think this was the result, I was taken aback. It seemed I was the only one who thought of us as family. Catherine clearly told me that I wasn't part of the family. So, I should take action as if I'm dealing with a non-family member. I decided to clean thoroughly. With that decision, I turned on my heels. My name is Harriet, a 64-year-old housewife. I live with my husband, Michael. We have one son, Bob, who got married a few years ago and has his own family. I want to marry her. That's how Bob introduced me to Catherine. Apparently, they were colleagues at the same company, supporting each other since their employment, sometimes challenging each other as rivals. Over time, Catherine became an indispensable presence for Bob, leading him to decide on marriage. The first time I met Catherine, she had a charming smile and was very reliable. I thought she would take good care of Bob. I thought a new, happy life was starting. Bob and his wife lived with us. Bob suggested we live together so he could support us in our old age, but that was the beginning of the tragedy. One day, while having tea with Catherine, I served her some sweets I had received from a friend. Although Catherine looked dissatisfied throughout. These sweets aren't very tasty. Are you in your right mind, offering me these? Upon her comment, I tasted one myself. But it tasted delightful. The sweets were from a famous bakery in New York where people often lined up. My friend had stood in line just to get them for me. I was sure they were delicious. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry. But these sweets are from a popular place in New York. My friend queued to get these. I don't think they can be bad. Since I found it delicious, I couldn't agree with Catherine saying they weren't tasty. It even matched the tea perfectly. That's why I snapped at Catherine. You're standing up to me? You have some nerve. Who allowed you to live here? If you're nasty to me, I can tell Bob about it. I didn't mean to be nasty. I merely stated the facts. Yet Catherine threatened to report that I was mean. Usually, I would have told her she was wrong. But what if Bob believed Catherine's words? What if he took Catherine's lies at face value? That thought scared me, and I couldn't speak up any longer. Seeing my silence, Catherine seemed pleased and continued enjoying her tea. Before I knew it, Catherine had eaten more sweets than I had, and I thought it was hypocritical, considering she said they weren't tasty. By then, our relationship was already off track. The fact that I couldn't rectify it was proof of my lack of courage. If I had reported Catherine's hurtful words to Bob or Michael at that time, I believe such a terrible ending could have been avoided. However, being spineless, I was afraid of breaking the family bond. That's why I couldn't do anything, nor did I even consider taking any action. Even if I knew it could lead to a terrible outcome. Catherine's selfish behavior didn't end there. One day, she was getting dressed up to go out. That in itself was not an issue, but there were still chores left to be done. I'm going out for tea with friends, so you'll have to manage the housework alone, Harriet. I was taken aback by her words. There were established rules regarding housework. The rule was that Catherine and I, being housewives, would share the responsibilities. Catherine was trying to break that rule. Isn't that against our agreement? We need to keep up with the chores, you know. When I confronted her, Catherine puffed up her cheeks in annoyance and retorted. I'm about to go out and have fun. Could you not bring me down with such remarks? But you're right. I haven't done my share of cleaning today. Could you please do it for me? Finish everything by the time I return in the evening. If not, there will be consequences. It was already past noon. The demand to clean the entire house starting now was excessive. Finishing by the evening seemed unreasonable. That's impossible. 
There's no way I can finish everything by the evening. No matter how you looked at it, it was unachievable. So, I told Catherine bluntly. But, it seemed my words irked her. With a frown, she shot back. Is that how a mother-in-law should be? Isn't a mother-in-law supposed to grant her daughter-in-law's wishes? Taking over the chores for me is also your duty. So, please do your best. With that, Catherine left the house. Left behind, I did my best all day. It appeared Catherine had been skipping her cleaning duties for several days, making it even tougher. Although it was challenging to finish by the evening, I finally managed to wrap things up by the time she returned. Catherine seemed slightly unsatisfied, but I was simply relieved it was over. I had always tried my best to get along with Catherine. Even when faced with unreasonable demands, I bore them patiently and somehow managed. Recognizing my efforts, Bob and Catherine invited us on a trip. It seemed Catherine had planned a trip to Hawaii for about two weeks. We want to have a family vacation after so long. We'll cover the expenses, what do you think? Upon hearing Catherine's words, I felt a sense of relief, thinking she finally appreciated my efforts. We quickly agreed to the trip and started preparing for our departure. And on the day of the trip, we came to the airport with Bob and Catherine. After checking our boarding gate, we had a moment to chat. We're looking forward to the trip. Let's make the most of it. I said, reaching out to Bob and Catherine. In my excitement, I was beaming. I was certainly thrilled about traveling overseas, but more importantly, I was happy that Catherine had planned the trip. I was confident it would be a wonderful journey. While in this buoyant mood, Catherine suddenly burst out laughing. Had I said something funny? As I tilted my head in confusion, Catherine dropped a bombshell. What? I didn't book a flight for you, Harriet. It's a family trip after all. Why don't you go back and clean the house? If the house is dirty when we come back, you'll surely be banished from the family. My eyes widened at Catherine's words. How could she not have booked a flight for me when it was supposed to be a family trip? Wasn't this supposed to be a trip for the family? No, Catherine had deliberately excluded me. All because she found me annoying or saw me as an adversary. I was flooded with a feeling of outrage. So, I hatched a plan to give Catherine a taste of her own medicine. All right, then. I'll head back. Don't worry, I'll clean the house just as you asked. I declared firmly. Bob and Michael seemed anxious amid the icy tension between Catherine and me. I'd always kept my feelings to myself and endured in silence. But that was about to end. I did as Catherine said, turned on my heel, and left the airport. But it's not like I was giving up. I had a plan up my sleeve. And that plan required me to return home. Once there, I began cleaning as she had instructed. But this time, I went above and beyond the usual cleaning. Throughout the day, I made various arrangements. First, I booked an extended stay hotel. Then, I hired a service to move all my furniture to this new place. Once everything was shifted, I gave my old home a thorough cleaning. I vacuumed, mopped, and even rewaxed the floors. If I was gonna clean, I was gonna make it spotless. With the cleaning done, I left my house and moved into the extended stay hotel. The next day, I visited a real estate agent. I decided to demolish my house and sell just the land. After finalizing the paperwork, I learned it would take about a week to level the house. Since Catherine and the others would be back in two weeks, that wouldn't be a problem. As my old home was being reduced to rubble, I lived in the extended stay hotel. A week later, I was informed that the house had been successfully demolished. I visited the site and found it was completely cleared. There was no trace of the house I once called home. It was a bittersweet moment, but the satisfaction I felt was immense. Now everything was set for my revenge. All I had to do was wait and see how Catherine would react. With one week left before they returned, I continued my search for a new home. And then the day arrived when Catherine and the family were due to come back. By then, I had found a few potential new homes and was just waiting to discuss them with Michael. While I was relaxing at home, 
My phone blared with an incoming call. I had a hunch who it was, but I checked to be sure. It was Catherine. Hello? What seems to be the matter? Honestly, I wasn't eager to talk, but I was curious to hear her reaction to my handiwork. Catherine's voice, laden with panic and accusation, blared through the phone. This isn't a what seems to be the matter situation. Where are you right now? The house is a mess. Get here as soon as possible. It seems that Catherine and the family have already reached home. And seeing the plot of land where our house used to be, they probably wanted to clarify the situation with me. I just cleaned up like you asked. What's so bad about that? Did I do something wrong? Yes, all I did was clean. She had warned me about leaving the house dirty, so I cleaned it thoroughly until not a trace was left. Yet, she's reacting like this. I find it quite unfair. I know I asked you to clean, but not like this. Are you out of your mind? Everything's gone. We can't even live here now. True, it'd be impossible to live there as it is now. All that remains is an empty plot of land. And that land is already listed with the realtor, so it's not even ours anymore. Well, you said to clean. If you're unhappy with what I did, why not buy the land and build a new house? Though I doubt you guys, who relied on us for a living, could afford to do that. The truth is, the reason we lived together wasn't just out of concern for our old age. Bob and Catherine were struggling financially. Bob's salary wasn't enough. Due to the economic downturn, they were managing well until Catherine quit her job. But after that, Bob's salary was significantly reduced due to the recession. Because of this, Bob found it difficult to even live on his own salary. Bob had approached Catherine several times, asking her to find work. But she insisted on being a full-time homemaker, saying it was her dream. With no other options, Bob turned to me for help. When I heard about their situation, I immediately suggested we move in together. Living together would lighten their burden, especially with the $2,100 monthly mortgage I was covering. To be honest, money wasn't an issue for me. With the condition that they'd use this time to get back on their feet, we decided to cover all their living expenses. That was the real reason behind our cohabitation. What? I had no idea about this. I thought you were just living on a pension. It's true that the average person couldn't do what I did. $2,100 a month is quite a lot of money, and if you're paying that every month, only someone with significant financial leeway can handle it. Not to mention, I was covering the living expenses of my eldest son and his wife. That sum must have been pretty significant. But I could afford it. Because, in fact, my family has been running that famous international business conglomerate. My nephew has taken over now. Remember when my father passed away last year? We have more money than we can use. Yes, my family has been leading this famous international business conglomerate for generations. So, we're essentially from a wealthy lineage. I've had a considerable amount of money ever since I was born and I inherited a vast fortune from my father who passed away last year. What? Why didn't you tell us? We're family. Hearing about my affluent background, Catherine was clearly flustered and upset. Why didn't I tell? Because we're not really family. After all the times she belittled me, and then as soon as she realized my status, she changed her attitude completely. It was incredibly selfish and infuriating. Well, that doesn't matter now. But I want to take Michael and Bob with me. I'll come pick them up. I might be resentful of Catherine, but I felt sympathy for Bob and Michael, who were thrust into this situation without any consultation. Therefore, I believe the two of them should have the right to live with me. Of course, their wishes are paramount, but I wanted to confirm their intentions. I hung up the phone and drove back to where the house once stood. When I arrived, Catherine and the others were waiting. As I said, Sorry for the wait. Catherine approached me. Please, forgive me. I now understand how powerful you are. Let's continue living together. After all, are we family? 
It's a bit harsh to abandon us over something like this, isn't it? Who was it that said we weren't family? She previously asserted that we weren't family and excluded me. Now, she's suddenly claiming we are family just to protect herself. Weren't you the one who said we aren't family? You didn't book a flight for me. Didn't you exclude me from the family trip because we aren't family? Catherine had clearly stated that we weren't family. That's why she didn't book the flight. Now, she's trying to flip the script, which feels incredibly deceitful. But it was just a prank. Don't you think you're overreacting? I wasn't serious. Just a prank? When the family trip was proposed, I felt so relieved. I thought all the terrible actions Catherine took could be forgiven. But that trust was broken. She betrayed me. To dismiss it as a mere prank is something I couldn't accept. Sorry, Catherine, but I can never forgive you. No matter how much you apologize, even if it was a prank, never. So please, give it up. I made it clear. I really can't take it anymore. Up until now, I've tried so hard to consider Catherine as family. Even when household chores were pushed onto me, I justified it because we were family. Even when complaints were made about things I did, I tried to stay positive, thinking she was just trying to connect. But after all my efforts, Catherine betrayed me terribly. She explicitly told me at the airport that we weren't family. No matter how hard I tried, it was all in vain. No matter how much I wanted to accept Catherine as family, she never recognized me as such. It was a painful reality. A fact I wanted to turn away from. Yet, I couldn't run from it. My heart felt like it was screaming from the pain. I've done my best up until now, trying to live together, hand in hand, as a family. I tried to accept Catherine. But I can't do it anymore. So please give up. I firmly told her this. Upon hearing those words, Catherine drooped down, saying, Why? And slumped to the ground. Bob, looking worried, called out, Catherine. But she didn't respond. To be honest, I thought it might be a nuisance to the neighbors. Still, I had no intention of dealing with Catherine any longer, so I decided to leave her behind. After confirming with Michael and Bob, both wanted to come with me. So, as I got the two into the car to head to a temporary apartment, Catherine, who had been in a daze, rushed over, desperately clinging to me, saying, Please don't abandon me. I can't cope without you. If you leave me like this, I... Despite her plea, my mind was made up. I had no intention of taking Catherine with us. I'm sorry, but please give up. The only ones I want to live with are Michael and Bob. You're not family, so it's absurd to live together, isn't it? It's absurd to support or live with someone who isn't family. Up until now, I've supported her because she was family. But if she's not family, it's a different story. There's no reason for me to go out of my way for Catherine anymore. Ignoring Catherine, I drove off. She was crying throughout. But it was a fate she brought upon herself. After that, the couple, Bob and Catherine, decided to divorce. Bob initiated the divorce, and as expected, Catherine resisted. However, once Bob hired a lawyer for the divorce proceedings, it was discovered that Catherine had been misusing household funds. The divorce went through smoothly. Of course, the misused money was demanded as compensation. Upon investigation, it was found Catherine couldn't pay back the misused funds. But Bob, showing no intention of forgiveness, demanded payment. Catherine tried to return to her parents' home, but Bob had already informed them of her reckless actions, and they were furious. She was apparently kicked out. Now, she lives alone, working day and night, trying to pay off her debts. Meanwhile, the three of U.S. are living happily. We moved to a new home after discussing it together and are now enjoying a peaceful life. The problem with Catherine escalated more than I had imagined. The fact that I couldn't go on the family trip still lingers a bit. To make up for it, Bob planned another trip to Hawaii for us. I want to travel as much as I can while I'm still able-bodied. I can't thank Bob enough for understanding my wishes. 
From now on, I want to support Bob as much as possible to get his life back on track.